Hi, I'm Granddad Kurt. I've been asked by several people to help them duplicate my X-Wing bomber construction and so I'm gonna just take a, a video here and show you all the details of the X-Wing and tell you how I put it together and show you close-ups of all the parts and hopefully that'll help you when you want to build one yourself. So this is the X-Wing bomber built a year and a half ago for my grandchildren for Christmas. You can see that it's suspended from a framework in order to provide movement when the kids are playing inside. So the fuselage is just big slab sides. It has brakes, a slight brake at the back of the cockpit. You can see that I actually cut that to allow that to bend in slightly and head towards the narrower nose. In the same way the top of the gunner's compartment has a break right under the windows there. You can see I cut that a little bit to allow that to bend in and take that narrowing shape as it goes up towards the top of the turret. This size has been uh, just fine. I I've seen 10 kids in here. It was designed for three, but uh, they just keep piling in and looking out. Everyone at least gets a window, if not a gun, and uh, they have a lot of fun with it. The back piece is just a piece of half-inch plywood uh, filling in the gap between the two sides. The bottom is also a flat piece of plywood that fills in the bottom and it's where the landing gear are attached to the sides. Each one of the legs is uh, simply a cut 2x4 with a 2x4 pad on the bottom and some half inch circles uh, in the middle just to give it a more of a landing gear look and each one is attached to the side of the airplane from the inside out through the landing gear leg. The front piece is actually two pieces, it has a lower piece that has the bombardier window and it has an upper piece that has the blister, the nose blister and a smaller diagonal piece at the top giving the X-Wing a little bit of an aerodynamic shape. And then the top piece uh, going between the sides is tapered trapezoidal because the nose comes into a uh, lesser width than the cockpit area. There were two insert pieces just put in the side that on one on each side just to mount the canopy to and the rear of the pilot's seat you can see is a piece with a cutout so that the gunner can get in and out of the rear uh, gunner position. Uh, this is two pieces and there's just a little connector piece on the back that holds that all together very nicely. Opening in the sides for the wing spars coming in. We can see the construction on the nose is again a salad bowl from the container store, plexiglass dome. It's attached by four screws into the half inch plywood. We can see the bracing at the top here uh, is 2x4 going across and that's where this lug uh, comes through and attaches to the outside uh, with a chain that goes up to a cross member. This gives us our suspension and allows the whole X-wing to pivot nicely. This is at the same level as the rear suspension going up uh, behind the gunner's compartment. 
Uh, each side of the bombardier's compartment has a rain shield over the open window and both sides are open. We have a gun. Is a standard, one of our standard laser guns, except this one's on a swivel made from an old uh, tire inner tube. Works very nicely and allows the gunner to take different targets under attack. Uh, he also has a bombardier window. Uh, looking back towards the pilot compartment, you can see the stick at the back of the instrument panel. The wing fold mechanism is in the open position. So these wings are in the folded position and that allows the kids to step on this 4x4 four four mounted in the ground and step up on the wing, up on the engine, and then open the canopy and come into the cockpit of the airplane. This is details on the wing fold lever shown in the closed position and if I I've taken these screws out and you can see the wing spars with 5 16 hook bolts that are going through each spar and as the wing fold lever is pulled out of the detent and push down to the bottom detent and can lock in the wings out position and as we pull back we can see yes we are in the flight position on the wings. You can see that this lever pushes down on the front, pivots here, pulls up on the back. I did this just by trial and error on what we wanted, but it looks like the rear is about six and three eighths, and the front pivot is about six and an eighth. Bar stock goes from the lever down to each spar, and the spars are hinged in the middle. There's another spar back in the back of the cockpit under the machine guns that is also hinged in the middle but it doesn't have the wing fold actuator so we're just actuating the front spar in order to make the wings fold and as I fold them you can see that they go back to the folded position and it locks in place. Now the canopy is constructed of corner bead. Drywall corner bead was a nice material, light and strong, and you can see that I ended up making one piece here and the same piece on the, on the opposite side, and then a front piece, and then these are two pieces of corner bead back to back because we have to be able to surround the plexiglass. I had to add this corner brace because the canopy was sagging a little bit out of shape. I also had to add pop rivets to the top panel and the top of the side panels in order to keep the plexiglass from separating after I, I used uh, windshield adhesive but it wasn't strong enough to take the weight of the uh, plexiglass. These handles were added later. This one on the outside to allow people to easily grab the canopy and open it and this one on the inside because the kids didn't have anything to grab in order to put the canopy down when they were inside. I also added this bungee in the back to keep the canopy from slamming open and it also takes a little bit of the weight off of it so that when it's coming to the closed position it's a it's a good position. The right side of the canopy has a couple pieces of plywood the actual one of the uh, cross members the 
uh, corner bead that goes all the way across the canopy comes out this side and I put these pieces on there just to brace it and what it does is it provides the stop for the canopy when the canopy is in the full open position it stops it at 90 degrees just to make it look a little more like it's actually supposed to be there for something else I put a little piece of quarter inch aluminum tube on there as a pitot tube the details on the firing computer this goes up to a position that that they can see it's just a, a couple pieces of plywood and a couple bars and allows them this is a modified binocular that has some compass and light readings inside and when the switch is flipped uh, you you see these uh, light readings inside and it's kind of cool and it looks like a targeting computer for the kids and they can do whatever size they want. The other instruments in the pilot's compartment are an old uh, tachometer off of a sand car and a stick grip from a joystick uh, from a video game and here's the other half of it that has the throttle is just mounted on the instrument panel any old instruments or switches can can uh, work nicely the trigger on the front of the joystick works the cannon uh, through a wire it goes from the cannon across the floor and up to the stick you can see the mounting of the stick is just got some tire inner tube rubber on the bottom that allows the stick to move around and act like a stick on a real airplane but it's not connected to anything that doesn't seem to decrease the enjoyment you can see looking past the stick we're up into the bombardiers compartment and looking back through that door we're into the rear gunner turret compartment. The other thing we see in the cockpit is the seat is adjustable with just normal shelf brackets and the seat has two what 10 inch uh, shelf brackets coming out and so it can be for a very tall pilot or an extremely short pilot that uh, just goes in and locks down and so different size grandkids can uh, enjoy flying it. Looking at the turret it has an inside control that controls the turret and also has a firing button up at the top that fires the machine guns. The turret itself is another salad bowl and it's put on a lazy Susan uh, ball bearing. The rod goes through the side, down the front, near the sight, over, and down the back side and out through this pivot. So that's the outside up and down pivot. The inside has a quarter inch aluminum tube that fits over the rod that's going through the side of the plexiglass and then down and across the handle and up on the other side and through that plexiglass and then another aluminum tube on it and plastic ties hold the whole thing together. There is a wire tapped into each one of the guns that comes down and across and inside on the left hand side here and down to the trigger on the machine guns so that when you press the trigger the machine guns fire. I'm just using battery power. One of the hatches is off there. It's got three AA batteries. They both feed each other and they last a couple months in use. Uh, and then I have to replace them. Might be nice to have a central battery compartment for these guns, but this isn't hasn't turned out to be very bad. So one of the problems I still have with the turret 
is that this turret was sized for my nine-year-old grandson at the time and it fits him perfectly and he can put his head up into the turret and he's standing on the floor of the compartment but anybody shorter can't reach their head up into the turret and if they're taller then they're squatting in the in the back here so at some point I like to think of some way to put a variable step or seat so that the kids can get in the back and kids of different size can fit up into the ball turret. With the wings open you can see the wing construction. Uh, two spars on each wing. The forward lower left spar goes up and connects through the fuselage hinge point to the upper right wing and the spars on the lower right wing connect through the fuselage to the spars on the upper left wing. The mechanism for folding and unfolding the wings is on the front spar only. You can see the spars go through the fuselage and you can see the the notch position that they are in when they're closed. The laser cannon on each, each wing tip are just fastened up through the bottom of the wing and into the PVC. You can see this little trapezoidal piece is uh, was added later and when the wings are closed position that piece comes down to this 4x4 four four and lays on top of it stabilizing the X-wing so the kids can climb in and out. The engines are all four the same. I'm recommending now that you use 8 inch galvanized vent uh, tubing pipe for the front and 6 inch vent for the back. There's flower pots uh, are the 8 inch flower pots for the front and the middle and then the rear has a 6 inch flower pot. The forward 8 inch vents have plywood forms, two of them in that provides rigidity so that the step can be attached and that uh, the kids can step on the step on the way into the cockpit. There's uh, small little triangular wood pieces put in just to stabilize each engine. The structure that I built to support the X-Wing is just some 2x8s on 4x4 four four posts uh, front and back that just go through eye bolts and down to the connection on the nose and in the same way across the back and the same thing down on a bolt down to the connection on the back of the X-Wing. You notice that the X-Wing bomber is in its stealth coloring right now. Uh, after a year and a half outside it started showing some signs of uh, wear on the plywood in spite of the exterior paint that was supposed to last 20 years. So I have given it another coat of that exterior latex paint and I'll put the colors back on like we did originally. The kids still play with it and it's uh, I've often thought that if you ever wanted to you could paint this up like a B-25 cockpit uh, in World War II and start a whole nother set of games.